Good morning and welcome and uh, those who are joining us on our Facebook live stream and those who are joining us on our 90.9 FM radio frequency. So and those who are joining us in person, so thank you. Uh, we have some important announcements coming up in just a moment um, from our council president, Paul Francois. So uh, we'll be hearing about that. So we're excited to hear those announcements. Um, <clears throat> this morning we are piloting our new projection system. So it, unfortunately, the content and the pastor are the same, but the way you see it is different, okay? Um, and so we'll be uh, working with that and developing that as time goes on, um, but it works really, really well, and we're thankful for all the gifts and generosity um, that made that possible. Remind you of our Lenten and worship schedule. So. Um, 11 o'clock here, we join um, the live stream from uh, Peace Lutheran Church in Pigeon Falls as some of us pastors are taking turns preaching every week, and so we will be gathering to watch that together here, or you may, um, through our website and, and through our Facebook page, you may join directly into um, that live stream from Pigeon Falls in the comfort of your home. Um, additionally, then at 6 o'clock, we gather here. Um, <clears throat> I know it's, the days are getting longer and nicer, but it would really be nice to have a few more bodies here on Wednesday evening. Um, we have the Confirmation Youth and their families joining us um, on the live stream, but uh, if you feel that's okay for you and it's safe for you to come here, um, you are certainly welcome to attend in person on Wednesday evening. And then just to announce our, <clears throat> our Lenten projects that we're going through is um, Change for Camp. Um, so that we can send our youth to Luther Park Bible Camp this summer. Um, and so we're asking you to donate your change or your, for you to commit uh, a certain amount of, of change per day for these 40 days of Lent. 
Um, this is in lieu of the uh, Lenten suppers, which we are not able to do. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully next year we'll be, we'll be back to normal. And then also the Lutheran World Relief Project kits, um, the health kits, the baby kits, and the, and the school kits. Um, there's receptacles for those items, and the church women will uh, put those together and make sure that they get to Lutheran World Relief. So without further ado, I want to invite uh, Paul to come forward and to uh, share uh, announcements from the council. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to give a long overdue update from our church council. I was unable to be at our annual meeting this year and wanted to use that as an opportunity to let you all know how extremely proud I was this past year to be a part of such a wonderful organization, Central Lutheran Church. Your giving, whether it be financial or time and talent, was amazing. As we all know, we, are faced with many ch we were faced with many challenges this past year, but we banded together, pressed forward, and kept our priorities of our Lord Jesus Christ at the forefront of our efforts and uh, continued to accomplish so much. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this special organization and to work with a wonderful church council to lead us through these difficult times. The future is unpredictable, but I have confidence in the support we have and the work that we will accomplish. Here are a few more updates from council. At our last council meeting, we revisited the reporting or the reopening plan and decided to expand our capacity for worship to 50 starting next Sunday, March 21st. We fully believe that we can provide a safe and uplifting spiritual environment for those of you that are ready to return. I encourage you to please consider returning to face-to-face -face worship and we look forward to worshiping together as a congregation again in the future. If things continue to improve, we will be looking to increase that number and we'll communicate that with you when the time comes. In the meantime, we continue to require face coverings and utilize an every other pew approach for seating. We will also continue to live stream worship and offer the option of participating via our FM station 90.9. Central Lutheran Church Chicken Dinner has been a long-standing tradition and council is having discussions about how we can continue to offer it in a safe manner. It might look a little different, but the chicken will still smell and taste as good as ever. We have reserved the date of Sunday, May 16th for this. Please stay tuned for more information. Two years ago, we administered a survey called the Church Assessment or CAT and our leadership has used your feedback to guide our work. Things were in the works last spring when we were forced to offer worship in a different way, but we have since revisited those ideas and will be looking to implement some of them, focusing primarily on hospitality and outreach in the near future. For those of you that are willing and able, here are a couple of current and local outreach opportunities. Ruby's Pantry will be returning to Mondovi on Thursday, March 25th. It will be at the Mondovi County Shop, and they will be serving from 4 until 5.30. This is a wonderful minute. Am I there? I'm there. This is a wonderful ministry outreach opportunity that serves many of our community members. Volunteers are needed, and it would be great if Central had some representation there. Please contact Noel at the church office if you would like more information on how you can help. Also, there is currently a Habitat for Humanity house being constructed for one of our community members in the Countryside Edition, right next to Pastor's house. And they could use some help, some of our help, with a variety of tasks. You can learn more about how you can help and how to sign up to volunteer your time by visiting the Habitat for Humanity website. And that's CVH, so I think it's Chippewa Valley Habitat for Humanity. So it's CVH, the number four, H.org. And so in a second here, we're gonna play a little video, but 
Before we start the video, I just want to thank you for your time this morning and for everything that you do to make Central Lutheran Church the wonderful place it is. So here's a little clip from the Habitat for Humanity. Um, it was on WEAU. It's like a two-minute clip. across the globe find a place to call home. For the first time in three years, the organization is building a house in the Chippewa Valley. The WEAU's Carla Rogner shares how Habitat for Humanity is helping a Mondovi family get their dream home. This plot of land is the foundation of a new home for Brittany Rissler and her three children, 10-year-old Ava, six-year-old Brielle, and five-year-old Nolan. I've always wanted to have my own home. Um, I never imagined being able to build a house. To get a bigger backyard. The Mendovi family will move out of their rented duplex into the new house thanks to Habitat for Humanity. I kind of knew about it, but I didn't really know the whole concept or what it was all about. Um, when I seen that there was an opportunity in Mondovi that they were going to be building another one, I thought it would be an awesome thing for me and my three kids. An organization spearheaded in the Chippewa Valley by John Dawson. So what Habitat for Humanity does is they build homes for people who just can't quite afford them. But it's important to know that these are, these are what we call partner families because they have to contribute time and effort into building the home. And also they take out mortgages just like anybody else, but they get the house a little bit less expensive. The organization will build the three bedroom home with the help of volunteers and community donations from places like Prevail Bank. We're also gonna be helping with our time. Um, Ryan's going to be helping with it, and we're also planning on helping on the inside work. When you're building a home, you need professionals in certain parts, like electrical, plumbing, HVAC. But after that, <laughs> it can all be done by volunteers. Brittany's home is expected to be completed early next year. Uh, it was a process, but I'm looking forward to be able to just decorating my house, painting my walls, all things you can't do renting most days now. Excited because we might be able to get pets. The fact that I'm going to have a house and be able to make payments on something that will be mine. Once her home is finished, Dawson says he has big plans for Habitat for Humanity in 2021. He hopes to connect at least five Chippewa Valley <laughs> families with new homes. Reporting in Mendovi, Carla Rogner, WEAU 13 News. Since 1976, Habitat for Humanity. Okay. And there we go. Um, there is no longer a hole in the ground, but it's, quite, it's come quite far. I think in the last few days they've been sheetrocking on the inside um, and doing all that kind of thing. So um, it's a great opportunity for us to volunteer. So thank you, um, Paul, for all the information. Let us con begin with our, and continue with our worship as we remember our baptisms, remembering <clears throat> that this time of Lent was, a, was originally uh, a time of preparation for baptism. It was a time of catechesis, a time of learning in preparation for them entering into the, into the church and into the faith. Um, and so 40 days of, of, of pretty good training. Um, so that's the basis of Lent. And so in the same way, then, we also remember our baptisms and how uh, we continue our learning and training uh, to be God's people in this time. So blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. <clears throat> so joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed in God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. And through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the waters and through the, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. 
And we praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So let us sing. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. And we join in the Kyrie eleison. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Divine word, you sent Moses to speak law to the people and bring order to chaos. You sent prophets to speak repentance and bring hope to the hopeless. You sent your son Jesus to become your living word. Open our ears to hear your word and our hearts to reflect the light of your truth to others. For the sake of the incarnate word, Jesus Christ, amen. So I'd like to welcome all the children to come forward to your screen, and I'm thankful for those children that are with us today. You know, one of the things I really miss is just the, the, the hum and the busyness and the noise of, of kids in church. Um, <clears throat> so we look forward to that kind of returning event as we continue on. Jesus tells a story today about... And it's a story. It's, we call those stories parables. So they're important stories because they teach us something. And Jesus tells this story about a rich man and a very, very poor man. And the rich man can't see the poor man. He doesn't understand how and why the man named Lazarus is so poor. So I have a, an idea. So I want you at home, I want you to close your eyes, okay? And I want you to, to tell, to think, what are my brothers or sisters, what is the color of my brothers or sisters' eyes? Or what is the color of my mom or dad's eyes? Keep your eyes closed, now opening your eyes. Okay, now open them up and did you, did you know? Did you know what color their eyes are? Okay. Now, here's another one. Maybe you know your parents' birthdays? So if you don't, you know, I mean, but how, 
If you don't know your parents' birthdays, it's a really good time to ask. Okay, now I want you to make a, uh, I want you to make a funny face, a happy face, a sad face, or a mad face. Okay? And I want you to kind of like do that face to each other. I don't see anyone in, in the congregation here doing that. You look like typical Lutherans. <laughs> okay, so do you notice? So if you see that face, that happy face, or that sad face, or that mad face, now how are you going, how are you going to talk to that? What, what are you going to say? How, what are you noticing that's going on? Okay? Did that work okay? All right. But that's how Je what Jesus is trying to tell us. Jesus is trying to tell us that sometimes when we see people, we need to take time to listen to them. We need time to look at them before we just kind of walk on by. Okay? So that's really important for how we love our neighbors and how we take care of each other is to notice things that are going on and then to look at them with Jesus eyes. This is what I call Jesus eyes because those are the eyes that we look at them, look with compassion and caring. Okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Here we go. So our psalm this morning is from Psalm 41, verses 1 through 3. And the psalm is meant to reflect and to lead us into our gospel today. Happy are those who consider the poor. The Lord delivers them in their day of trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. They are called happy in the land. You do not give them up to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed. In their illness you heal all their infirmities. Sustain us and heal us. So the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come out and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham from far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger <laughs> in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed so that there, those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so and no one can cross from there to us. He said... Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So, sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Jesus, as in the parable we just heard from Luke's Gospel, deals with matters of wealth in a very straightforward manner. And on the verses just before this parable, Jesus gives his famous warning about the dangers and pitfalls of wealth when he declares, you cannot serve both God and wealth. 
And so this parable illustrates Jesus' words. Now, in the last number of years, as I have traveled around and been privileged to do so, I have noticed in this great country a lot more poverty. Maybe it's always been there, but it seems in these last number of years it's become more clear to me. Because I remember going to the first ELCA youth gathering that was in New Orleans, Louisiana, a couple of years after Hurricane Katrina. And what I remember from that experience is that when the hurricane hit that city, uh, it exposed what is in that city is like a whole third world nation that lived in extreme poverty. And the hurricane ripped open the veil and the nation's poverty could no longer be hidden. And then just driving around Wisconsin and Minnesota, I would see what I see properties and homes that appear to be very poor and run down. And I am reminded that in America, one in four children are food insecure. One in six children in the city of Minneapolis are considered homeless. And I can't remember the news source from this past week, but it reported some American households that some children have to take turns eating meals, meaning meals are being intentionally skipped so siblings can eat. And with the economic chaos caused by the pandemic, it has only become worse. Thus, there is great economic disparity in our country between those who have enough, those who have more than enough, those who don't have enough, and those who aren't even close. Now, the problem with economic disparity between rich and poor is that it is dehumanizing. The divide in our own world has become chasm-like. And what Jesus is telling us in this parable is that love of money and wealth, when it becomes more important than love of people, it becomes dehumanizing. Everyone will suffer, rich and poor alike. But the poor really take it on the chops. Of course, we have to remember that Luke, in the very beginning of his gospel, is writing this gospel that we're hearing today to a guy named Theophilus, who was, we think, a wealthy patron to the early Christian movement behind Luke's gospel. And you have to remember, the early Christian church, it brought together rich and poor, and now they were one, one community, one household of faith, and they had to deal with the economic disparity between having rich people and really poor people in the same congregation because, I mean, before in the time of Jesus, um, those two classes, they were not allowed to mix and they were not allowed to acknowledge each other even. So we can see that in Luke's gospel and in Jesus' words that the issue of economic disparity is a big deal for them. So therefore, I believe that Jesus tells this parable not to create shame or to create despair among us, but it is to create change. It is a cautionary tale. Now, if we were telling the story, we would like to tell it having the rich man repent, like Zacchaeus will in next Sunday's gospel reading. But in our parable today, the rich man does not, and he remains clueless to the end. So most pointedly, the barrier or chasm between the rich man and Lazarus is right there in the beginning. The rich man lives a life of privilege and comfort. And by contrast, even though Lazarus exists at the very entrance of the rich man's gated community, he's just one of those folks despised and ignored. The rich man lives believing Lazarus does not deserve anything, especially his mercy. <clears throat> now, Lazarus, on the other hand, is food insecure lacks health care, and is homeless. And he has no dignity, as even the dogs lick his sores. Now, dogs back then were not the pampered pets of today, 
but they were mean, nasty, disease-carrying scavengers. And to the wealthy world around him, Lazarus doesn't even matter. Well, as the story goes, they both die, and there's a reversal. And the Gospel of Luke loves reversals. So in this new world, Lazarus now rests comforted in the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man now suffers in Hades. The time for the rich man to change his ways has passed. And yet he still doesn't get it. He still thinks the old ways between him and poor Lazarus are still in place. He still thinks Lazarus exists for his benefit. He's still giving orders. It's, amazing. it's an amazing thing to be so self-absorbed that even when sitting in the fires of hell, you still think the old rules apply. It's still all about you. But it's not. The chasm from earthly life remains, and now they are on opposite sides. The chasm is uncrossable as Abraham rejects the rich man's request for a drop of water. And then Abraham has to explain to, thing, explain to him how things have changed. Eventually, the rich man gets it, sort of. I mean, his eternal lot, he realizes, is not going to change. So he throws a Hail Mary, so to speak, to help his brothers avoid his fate. So, unbelievably, the rich man still doesn't get it. He still thinks it's all about him, and Lazarus exists only to serve him. But there's no excuse. There is no way the rich man or his brothers can claim ignorance because they have Moses and the prophets. There is no excuse that in the life one lives that one should, one should not always do justice, love God, and love one's neighbor. Accordingly, Jesus is telling us, there's nothing wrong with wealth per se. So those like Theophilus and Zacchaeus realize that one cannot put love of wealth above love of God and love of neighbor. Because wealth has a way to make us do that. And we then don't see the needs of those around us. Rather, as the rich man learned too late... We need to use wealth to serve the way of justice and the way to love our neighbor and not to create or to perpetuate injustice. And therefore, like all of Jesus' parables, this one is designed to make us think. It is spiritual shock therapy. It challenges our certainties and assumptions so that we can change and bring our lives closer to the dream of God's love of neighbor. And in Jesus, everyone belongs, and in Jesus, everyone matters. So finally, Jesus, when Jesus did rise from the dead, that means for us that we are no longer bound to the way things are. Thus, when we are free from our self-financed salvation projects, when we can love freely, we will see things then differently. Because we will realize that poverty kills. It shortens lives. It kills dreams and destroys hope. This is not good. And therefore, may we see things differently. May we change where we need to change. And as such, we, are, we too are called to repent, to change, to see life differently and to see people differently. Because in Jesus we can. In Jesus, risen from the dead, now all things are possible. And this is what the story of this parable is about. Amen. So let us sing.
church we confess our faith I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord he was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. Almighty God, if we do not show love, we cannot know the abundant life which you desire for us. Touch our hearts with mercy, that we might also be merciful. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. And Lord, so much of the world suffers for basic lack of basic needs. Lead us to demand more equitable systems of resource and use, resource use and distri dis distribution that none may be in need, compassionate God, hear our prayer. And Lord, the world is warming, the ice is melting. Give us wisdom to deal with the challenges ahead and find new ways of living and thriving along with your creation, compassionate God, hear our prayer. And be with those who suffer from diseases related to malnutrition, as well as those with various 
diff different kinds of eating disorders. Feed us on your grace and bring us into wholeness with our bodies and our souls. And we pray to send your healing spirit to be your presence with Andy Johnston and all those who we name in our hearts in this moment. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. And comfort those whose hearts are broken by the loss they love. Assure us that you hold all the departed in your eternal love and that we will see them again when our time on earth is done, especially as we remember and re remember Cap and Margaret Betchel and Dean Johnson and to be with their families who, who loved them and now grieve their passing. Give them the hope and promise of resurrection and the life to come. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. And Lord, we remember Renly Joe Wolf, who will be baptized here later this morning, and pray your blessings upon her and her family as she is made one of yours forever in the waters of baptism. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. You hear all your children's prayers and gather the lost into your loving arms. Teach us to put our trust in you and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. For those of you who are sitting distance from one another, um, you can like wave the peace. This is the peace wave. Um, if you're like sitting next to someone, you can actually shake hands, hug, or whatever you do. And for those who are joining us on, online, remember we are also sharing the peace of the Lord with you and you with us in this relationship that knows no bounds and nothing can stop. And so as we do that, we also receive then our offering. Again, thankful that God has sustained us, especially in this past year when things have been so different. And yet you as God's people have risen up. You have been generous and caring and thoughtful and persistent and patient. And so that is something to be thankful for. And so for that offering that you have given in those things, I am, I am thankful and we give that also to the Lord. And so we pray. When we give, we receive a blessing to know the fruits of love. Bless these offerings and use them as well as our lives to prosper the ones who need it most. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we have joined in worship, held fast by the God of grace, who looks to us to serve the needy and to have God's heart for the poor. Let us tend the lost ones and the loved ones God loves. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Again, thank you so much for worshiping today. And <clears throat> we look forward to seeing you this Wednesday, either at 11 or at 6 o'clock. We are more than welcome to join us online, but it would be really nice to have some live bodies here. And also to thank Paul for his words and the announcement that we are going to increase our in-person worship at 50. And want you to feel welcome. Um, if you come in and there's like 51, you're still welcome. Um, and so come and feel safe and be safe. And so we go our way um, singing our closing hymn, Blessed Are They, verses 1 through 3. Let us sing. Rejoice! 
Fuck.